Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome to Forgot to Save, the weekly podcast where we explore those games that had a significant impact either on the gaming industry or perhaps just on ourselves that we never really got around to playing. We have chosen some games already previously, and this week we have been playing Chrono Trigger, and that's what we're here to discuss. But before we get into that, Stone, what's new with you? Nothing much. Um... I really spent all my time playing Chrono Trigger. I haven't really done much. Well, it was the holidays, obviously. We we're recording this. What is today? The 28th? 28th, yep. So the new year is coming up. But uh, I'm not doing Christmas with my family until the 30th. So even oh. I haven't done like the holidays yet. So Gotcha. Whereas I've already done it twice now. Right. Thankfully, uh, thankfully, it's behind us. But New Year's coming up. Not a real huge new year's celebrator me person i i'm not oh are you yes and no like i'll i have a small group of friends we meet with every now and then but you know every second or third year we'll be like okay let's just do it alone this year yeah yeah i don't know it, it's just maybe it was never impressed upon me that it was a a big deal so occasionally i'll stay up hey it's a new year i'll i'm gonna go to bed now yeah, we always find a movie to sync it with, like Midnight at some important part on some movie. So, and that's what we were just talking about last night. We were walking the dogs, and this this, this just, you know, will probably segue into a gaming talk at some point, but uh, just bear with us. We were walking the dogs, and we were trying to come up with ideas for traditions, because, you know, we, we have three kids, two, five, and 13, going on 14 now, and we're trying to establish our own traditions, you know, kind of breaking away from our family's traditions and coming up with our own, or at least, you know, tweaking the existing ones. And we are trying to come up with some for New Year's. And that was one that I know that you do and other people do as well. Uh, for example, I know what Infinity War, you time it with Thanos' snap, right? Yeah, we've Things done like that, that one, yeah. So, so we, may, we may go about doing that. Otherwise, uh, the kids get to stay up late. And we drink uh, non-alcoholic sparkling apple cider. Sure. Yeah. That's and a go classic. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> really go nuts. And Absolutely let loose. <laughs> <laughs> they think they want to, but it's not happening. Uh, but it, ha it has been pretty busy um, yeah. b between work and personal lives and, of course, the holidays. Um, I have been playing Chrono Trigger as well. Uh, certainly not the only game I have been playing. But so have you, have you done anything gaming-wise other than Chrono? So... Yes and no. Nothing of <laughs> note. Like um, a few hours of like RimWorld before bed sometimes. And I bought a ton of stuff on the Steam sale and have only played one game that I was considering getting for my wife but didn't know if it was garbage. So I played it like within the return period first. Okay. Smart. And it stood the test of time? I liked it. It's called uh, Witch, Witch Spring R, I think. Okay. And it is a, you like play as like a little witch. It's like chibi style, like little like cutesy anime. And uh, you choose how to spend your day, like building your stats or engaging in different activities to, like craft potions and stuff. And then the decisions you make change the way that your character grows and impacts the story, which I think is very interesting. I was I, like I saw it. She really likes games that are like a, like a nice colorful art style or she likes witches and stuff so i was like i'll try it out and see how it is i was initially worried it was kind of a cheap game mm -hmm. but it's like surprisingly quality it feels like a double a kind of indie game and, and uh, what is it I called ended up enjoying it i think it's witch spring r i'll have to double check which which spring r? okay yeah i'm pulling it up because that sounds like a that sounds like a moshi game <laughs> okay there it is okay this is apparently the game you buy for your significant other. Yes, which <laughs> spring are. I put about, I think, yeah, I, I put about an hour into it, like enough to finish the tutorial, and yeah. it was fun. I really liked it. I'll, I'll probably actually keep playing it. Nice. But. Okay, so you've been you've been playing Witch Spring R, a little bit of RimWorld. I haven't really been playing. I played an, <laughs> an hour of it, and it was interesting. But, like, yeah, as far as gaming, I haven't done much. Oh, no, actually, that's a lie. Um if After you say work, Digimon. No, it, I swear I wasn't going to even utter the D word. But <laughs> uh, after work, I have been... Uh, I really like to fall back on Fire Emblem Three Houses because okay. there's four different endings for that game. 
and I love, you know, having a group of characters that I can build up and adjust their stats and choose their classes and stuff in a strategy game. So I love just replaying that game and doing in the background. And I just like grind and get their stats as high as possible before I move on with the story. But I finished another playthrough of that and I just started my third playthrough. So Okay, so third so you you've gotten half of the endings? Yay! No, three out of four. Oh no, you, two out of yes, yeah, two out of four. Sorry. You're okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because there's it's called three houses. So far, I've done two houses <laughs> out of the three. All right. And uh, it's fun. I, I say that, but like that was like two hours. I was at the end of the game, so okay. like I played like three hours of Rimworld, two hours of that, and like an hour of <laughs> this witch game. And but, then uh, Chrono Trigger. But yeah, other than that, it's been Chrono Trigger and. That has been incredibly enjoyable. I've been like actively looking forward to getting back into Chrono Trigger while I was playing. So yeah, well, don't spoiler. Don't, yeah, don't talk much about it. Yeah, you did. I beat the game. So like, Man. I played these other games because I finished playing Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Well, we will we'll get into the meat and the potatoes here in just a little bit because I know Stone, you're definitely gonna have a lot to say. Um, if you're looking for a Stone centric episode of forgot to save this is probably going to be i immediately have one. bad news for you <laughs> <laughs> no i it's so funny because like like we started this podcast and it's on your channel i feel like you're the main focus it's not shocking to say that uh, most people are going to align with your taste and then we start out and your game is some <laughs> point and click adventure game that none of us are familiar with and then mine is like an rpg that <laughs> that you like obviously have not played as much I just think it's so funny. Far, it's like, this is how we'll start. Yeah. I don't think these two games could be any further outside of my comfort zone unless we were playing some like World War II tank dating simulator. <laughs> oh, wow. That actually sounds kind of fire. I'm pretty sure that exists. Many a true nerd played something along those lines several years ago, and it was amazing. Dang. I need to get me a Panzer. <laughs> 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 what have you been playing? Uh, so I've been, everything that I've been playing, I can't say that I've played anything just for, like, in my quote-unquote downtime. Sure. Everything has been with, with a with a purpose, um, with free time just being limited. So I have been playing some Chrono Trigger. Yeah. I did not beat it, spoiler alert. Um, That's fine, we'll, wasn't expecting we'll it. We'll certainly talk about that. Although, I will say this, and, and this is jumping the gun, I do have every intention to. Great. So that already says a lot, I think. Yeah. I uh, but... I've been playing, uh, let's see, Dark Souls 2. Yeah. Um, actually did some streams of that, which has been a blast. I caught that. That was super fun. You're talking about yeah. your Soul Level 1? The Soul Level 1, I, I attempted, for, for those of you who have played Dark Souls 2, uh, one of the DLCs, The Crown of the Ivory King, you can go through the whole DLC, take your time, and you get this one item that allows you to see this this tiger boss. Be, and if you don't get this item, the Eye of the Priestess, this tiger boss, Ava, the king's pet, is invisible. Well, if you're crazy, you can actually go up against that boss while she's invisible. And it's completely possible to kill her and bypass it and essentially go through the end of the DLC in a matter of three minutes. Um, I decided I was going to do that at soul level one. And after about a dozen or so attempts on stream, I realized my skill level isn't anywhere close <laughs> to being ready to do that so um yeah you we, seem we, to be this big disadvantage where you weren't able to see the boss yeah well and i wonder if it's because i'm colorblind <laughs> no it was not the no, boss was, was invisible <laughs> <laughs> i was watching and i was like i have no idea where this thing is and then you died and i was like oh it was there yeah yeah there was uh, one it, it part was... that was funny you pulled out your bow and you shot it in the head and you were like oh i can see it now it's right there and then you immediately died at the immediately end of died sentence. Yeah. immediately died yeah so not only you know is it invisible but most of its attacks one shot me yeah so didn't really stand a chance but i've been playing dark souls 2 which has been great because it this particular run through which i am doing a series on the channel which is why i've been playing it so much but it I don't think I've ever appreciated Dark Souls 2 as much as I do right now. Mm -hmm. When the game came out, and it's actually really the, the first game that I made it consistent videos for on the channel, and it's what, uh, I hate to say it like this, but put my channel on the map, if you will. But I, yeah. I had, you know, videos were being hosted on IGN, the the Wikidot, the Fextra Life Wiki. Uh, the one-shot boss challenge. Yeah, exactly. And that was all in Dark Souls 2. But I still didn't love the game or appreciate it as much as as I did, say, Dark Souls 1. 
Um, and I really haven't played it a whole lot since then, but now I'm going through all the Souls games at base level, and I'm really seeing a lot of the care and attention that went into Dark Souls 2. It's not the same. I mean, you could almost slap a completely different title onto the game, and it you wouldn't bat an eye. Mm-hmm. It's almost not a Souls game. The, the, the structure is there, the mechanics are there, but just... Um, I don't know, thematically, strategically speaking, the game doesn't want you to rush into every encounter and button mash, spin to win, like Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 has. It really rewards thinking through every encounter, preparing almost like it's a true RPG in that fashion, like making sure you're stocked up on consumables and throwables and and arrows, make sure you have the right rings equipped and the armor and playing at a disadvantage of soul level one you really have to employ that strategy so that's been that's been a really fresh take on a game that i've I've played a ton of before and never never really loved it until now sure i get it yeah yeah it's been uh it's been weird and then the other one i'm I'm back in elden ring full force uh i think we've already mentioned this but you know the game awards came and went and all of us, everyone who has ever launched Elden Ring fully believed that we are going to get an announcement for the Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion. Yeah. We're going to get a trailer. We are going to get a release date. And those Game Awards came and went, and it's nothing. But that was I've, a shocker. Uh, it really was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't It, it wasn't a, a good award show in general. Sure. But that just, that lack of that trailer made it just, uh, how do I ask for a refund? Yeah. <laughs> For the yeah. last three hours of my it life. It was not spectacular. Okay. This is a gaming question I'll ask. Okay. Your game of the year. I think I know it, but your game of the year. <sighs> my game of the year is Liza P. I knew it. Yeah. Is that, yeah, that's where you, it, Liza P, and, and I can't, I almost can't praise the game enough. It took, it took a formula that has been trodden many, many times before. And it didn't do anything exceptionally out of the norm. Um, But it took games like Bloodborne and Sekido, and it said, what if we took some of the best mechanics from these games, merged them together in a way that actually fundamentally makes sense, but we also put it in a well-known children's story. Yeah. And and give it this this dark, gritty feel. And all of that, honestly, to me, when you describe it like that, it sounds like, a, a messy, try-hard, horrible, horrible uh, example of a game, but everything they did worked. Yeah, from an outsider's perspective, it seems like it iterated. It didn't reinvent. Sure. Yep. I I, I agree entirely. I can't I can't really think of anything that it does that has never been done before. It just everything it did, it did exceptionally well. Mm-hmm. Unlike uh, Lords of the Fallen, and this is not to just bash on that game, but Lords of the Fallen decided to do a bunch of things new with absolutely almost limitless numbers of build combinations and weapon variety and throwables, consumables, armor, and you have this cool like undead umbral realm that you can visit, essentially doubling the world size, but I don't think it did any of the mechanics very well. Um, And actually... I had already mentioned him, but many true nerd. He just put out his 2023 awards, and he said that he he has a couple of rules when judging games. One, uh, are you are you creating new mechanics, and if so, are they interesting enough to hold my attention? That's going to score you points. Or if you're not introducing new mechanics, are you just showcasing a master class of how to use those mechanics? Sure. If so. You have my attention. And that's where I think the Liza P. Lords of the Fallen debate, which somehow is still raging on, I think that's where Lords of Fallen, Lords of the Fallen falls short and Liza P just really excels. Sure. Yeah. What about I, you? I, I'm out well, <laughs> real quick. I'm outside of like the uh the Souls Born yeah. extended universe here. But I had <laughs> seen some complaints of of Lords of the Fallen and uh I I thought just hearing the mechanics, like having that second world that you could travel to to solve puzzles and stuff, seemed like it would have been super interesting. But it seems like yeah, the execution was a little lacking, which yeah. uh, was upsetting to hear. 
Yeah, it, it was it is really cool. The whole it, and and it's it's scary. It the one thing that that game does exceptionally well is give you a feeling of dread because as you're as you're in Axiom, which is the regular land of the living if you will, if you want to see and peek behind the curtain into Umbral, you don't have to enter that world. You can hold your lantern and it gives you a glimpse, mm -hmm. which is very cool. It can kind of show you some puzzles that you might be missing or even loot enemies, whatever. But if an enemy from the Umbral realm hits you because it, it's uh, that whole saying, like, you know, when you peer into the darkness, the darkness peers back. Oh, right. When you look into Umbral, they can see you. And so if you're holding up your lantern, you can get attacked by an umbral enemy and then they pull you into that world. And there are times when you don't want to. And that feeling right. of dread, like all of a sudden you pull up a lantern and there's a reaper right in front of you with a scythe ready to slash you and bring you into their world. It is genuinely scary until you've done it for the, you know, 12th straight hour <laughs> sure. in the same zone only to go and solve the same puzzle again and again. Sure, and it seems like, especially now, like this is also off the heels of like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, where you're constantly hopping between worlds. And there was that Xbox game, The Medium, that got like yes. decent reception when it came out too. So it's like, if you want that, there are other places to go for it too. Yes. So you kind of have to polish it up a little bit. But Did you hear about, uh, what, uh, what was it, Ratchet and Clank? So yeah. there was there was a, a lot of a lot of leaks about with Insomniac and all that, and but they they talked about in that leak Ratchet and Clank and and, and I don't want to focus too much on leaks if we want to right. talk about that from a news perspective, but they, oh my gosh, what did they make like eight hundred dollars in profit or something? In Rift Apart. Yeah, it like it I did exceptionally well, but it was so expensive. Oh right, that makes sense. Uh, you know, and they they were they were producing it for the PS5. It's it's new technology. They put a lot of money into it. I forget right. what it, it it was something insanely low for how well the game did. That doesn't shock me. And also, I obviously as an outsider that doesn't care about their finances, I don't necessarily mind because I know that that is an investment in the future. Exactly. Of, yeah. Of their their content on that console. But what I will always give Ratchet and Clank credit for is it does the reverse kind of common e3 thing where they showed off a trailer and when the game released it looked better than it did in the trailer it was yeah it was a really really good looking game i think my only disappointment and this is i set myself up for this and i think a lot of people did i was under the impression that you could rift anywhere at any time mm. and that i mean th that was asking too much but when you did, and it really was as seamless as the trailers made it out to be, that was unbelievable. Yeah, it was super fun, and it did a great job of carrying the identity of, like, the original Ratchet and Clank games. Because I played, like, the first three on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, the same kind of puzzle solving, the same traversal. It was just as fun as the old games, and introduced new mechanics. It was, like, super fun. So, yeah, love that game. Love that it did well. But when it puts so much time and effort into having the two worlds, it's hard to see another entry attempt it and it not be as exciting. So I, I want to know, 2023, sure, big game the, for years or big, big game for years yeah, and a big, big year for games. It was, in fact, there was at least one big game for this year. <laughs> um, <laughs> my pick is extremely biased. I know that much, but I... Again, this is one of those iteration rather than redefining that I think does um, tremendously, and it's Pikmin 4. I think they oh, okay. really maximized the visuals on that console. They gave it an excellent new art style. They brought back one of my three favorite Nintendo franchises ever, uh, and the Creating Your Own Character is super fun. They added a ton of new lore into the Pikmin universe. It was just, I had so much fun playing it front to back. I think I smiled the entire time. It had a decent amount of challenge toward the end of the game, too. There's, like, something for everyone. It was by far my favorite game of the year. Wow. Wow. I, I know you have you have really sung its praises several times with me, uh, but I guess I just didn't see that coming. Now, I know this is the For God's Save podcast, so mm -hmm. in, in 15 years, we're going to be playing the games that came out this year that we didn't get to. We're aware of that. Um, 
what are some of the huge titles this year that came out mm-hmm. that you haven't played that you would you hope to get to? I don't know if this is a hundred percent that. Okay. But Baldur's Gate 3 is something that I may be interested in sometime down the road. But I've said before that setting doesn't do much for me. Um, I I have to think about that for a second. But you can be yours. I think you have one in mind, right? Yeah. So I have. I, I'm actually. I pulled up a list of the big games of 2023, and there's there's several. I honestly am going to have to make a list to try and play these or stream these in 2024. Um, I want to finish Tears of the Kingdom. I I absolutely love that. The only reason I got I got burnt out on it is because I was this is during my my cri- my identity crisis on the channel phase where I was trying to play all the big games and this one I I made it oh gosh, I don't know, like 30 hours in yeah. and uh I just got burnt out making the video so I stopped playing, but I really I do want to see that through to the end. Um uh, I haven't played, let's see, Spider-Man 2. Oh, great. Need to play game. Spider-Man 2. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Although I need to finish the first one Can I before that. Beef yeah. with Jedi Survivor Super Please. Quick? Yeah. I bought that when it came out because I love the story of the first one. And I was like, I want the story of the second one. And I think it came out at a time where I wasn't really playing anything. I have tried to go back to that game so many times. And I'll play it and I'll get up to a point and then there'll be some bug that I can't pass and I have to wait for the next patch. And really? then I'll play it till the next patch and I'll play it to the next patch. I eventually gave up on it. But four different times that's happened to me where I was completely locked out until a patch came out. That's, so, yeah. I would love to like that game, but no, sorry. Okay. Hey, that's fair. I know I played the first one a bit on stream and I really liked it. You know, kind of the, the Souls-like in the Star Wars universe. What's not mm-hmm. to love about it? But that that's disappointing. Yeah, it was a big bummer. Um, you know, I, sorry, I'm looking at the game now, the game list now. And uh, I have played pretty much everything I want to play, but there really? are two games that stand out to me. Okay. Uh, Alan Wake 2, which you're yes. playing now. Um, well, and, playing the first one. Yeah. Uh, well, I need to replay the first one because it's been okay. so long. <laughs> so, yes, the Alan Wake uh, duology there. And uh, actually, conveniently, because we're talking about Chrono Trigger, there is a game that came out uh, this year. That yes. is kind of very heavily inspired by Chrono Trigger called Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars, yep. I just bought it on the Steam sale. So okay. I may technically still play it in 2023. There's <laughs> three days left, but that's my uh, that's my only one left to play. Maybe the uh, Tillier Riza. That's a series I've been looking into. But, okay. But that third game came out this time this year. But yeah, yeah pretty CS- much one game. Yeah. <laughs> Sea of Stars, when I was kind of researching Chrono Trigger a little bit, that just kept popping up. Yeah. Taking massive inspiration from, from Chrono Trigger. Uh, let's see what else. I'd like to finish Final Fantasy 16. Um, <sighs> I just Alan gave Wake, it up, man. <laughs> you just gave it up completely, huh? I loved, I thought the prologue was incredible. Yes. The first two hours of that game literally sold me on it. I bought yep. it day one because, you know, the demo was just the first two hours. And I did not regret it for a long time. It was really good. The combat was slow in the beginning when you only have like one type of magic, and it's kind of like, you know, the same moves over and over again. Yeah. But you unlock the second, and then it's you know we're kicking into Devil May Cry. We're changing up our combat styles. It's super fun. But I have I'm probably like 26 hours into the game, and I'm like, this is dog. There's no, the world is empty. Gotcha. It's just I explore every single inch of every map. There's no treasure. There's nothing interesting to find. Wow. It's just, it's, it's like, I honestly feel like Final Fantasy 16 is an MMO, but none of the other players are online and they took all the loot. <laughs> I genuinely get that feeling playing the oh. game. Oh. It's beautiful. Love the cutscene. Story is super interesting. It's not 26 hours interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I'm sure it's a 40-hour game. I wouldn't be surprised. It's well. Let's see. Let's see. My favorite website. How long to beat? <laughs> I use this all the time. Let's see. Final Fantasy. And this is like me stopping and doing every side quest. The very few that are available, but they're just not interesting. Okay. Um. Thirty. Thirty-six hours for the main story. 
Okay. Was that there's a completionist one there too? Yeah, so that's just you're just pushing story. Main and sides, fifty seven hours. Okay, that's completionist probably completionist seventy eight. Yeah, main and side is probably more okay. than I was going toward. But yeah, so 20... roughly fifty eight hours. Yeah. I, I mean you got me the steel case, which I love. I have that displayed like I love the character designs and everything. I love the story in the beginning, but just it can't go the distance if you ask me. That's fair. That's fair. Hmm. Well, I'll I'll knock knock that down on my list because uh, <laughs> I only got I think I was twelve hours in, maybe not even that far. Yeah. Uh, maybe like ten. But Alan Wake Two is really high up on there. But oh, yeah. I do I. I really and I want to do the whole like remedy extended universe. So I at least want to do Alan Wake, it's DLC and control before I do Alan Wake too. Yeah, control was super fun when it came out. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Uh Dead Space remake, but that's if whenever I get to that that'll be great. I love Dead Space. Right? So playing the remake will be cool. I heard the um, PC port though is not the one to go after. No. No. And fortunately, and this is I feel like this is not the first time I've ever done this on this podcast but uh, our library has oh, dead right. space nice. on ps5 i believe awesome yeah it's it's amazing if you haven't been to your local library anytime soon you owe it to yourself to go and take a look they have switch uh, mine at least has switch ps4 and 5 xbox one xbox one series x tons of movies absolutely tons of movies they have book sales uh it, i don't know I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge proponent for libraries. So sure, love to hear it. Go support your local library. Um, and just because you said I'm gonna add Pikmin Four into my list, and that'll that'll probably round me out. I would say it's the best starting point into the Pikmin series. Period. You don't need to have played the other ones. It will increase your enjoyment. But Pikmin Four is like the one. If you're gonna like, mm, I'm thinking about Pikmin. If you could pick it up and try it at your local library, <laughs> then I would recommend it. <laughs> Oh shoot, Blasphemous 2. I forgot about that. Oh, I need to play Blasphemous 2. 2D pixel art Metroidvania? Yes, yes. 2D but, pixel art Metroidvania with a dark, like, the dark ages of Catholicism. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, heavy. Yeah, I, uh, I remember you playing that on stream. Yeah, I played, I played the first one. I did a series on the first one, and I streamed the DLC. I still need to uh, finish the DLC of the first game and then play it. Um absolutely incredible and really brings up a lot of interesting conversation we had some fascinating conversations around that game when i was playing through it sure so if you uh if you have any interest in in reliving possibly uh some childhood trauma with us you can <laughs> join our discord <laughs> yeah. and uh, yes and a lot a lot of gore all right uh, let's stop Let's go back to my famous transition here. I want to yeah. talk about something else. Yeah. Yeah. Good Let's, segue. Thank you. Let's talk about Chrono Trigger. I've never played it. Oh, this is how I find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought we, I thought we were still, for... <laughs> thought we were still playing the dragon game. You're just idling for 11 hours on steam. To I'm to still trying me. to find out how to, how do I knock the nest down for the fire? Oh my God please stop. <laughs> oh it's a great Bastard. puzzle got it <laughs> no <laughs> i'm happy to report no crates i haven't seen a single crate. or interactable <laughs> in this game <laughs> some buttons and switches but no crates yeah which you <laughs> if i am correct you had some issue in the first dungeon of this game is that right uh, yes uh <laughs> not just the first dungeon <laughs> oh, good. the, the well, first dungeon good. and I don't know what it was, but I was just missing this one path repeatedly. Just over and no, I probably was in that dungeon a solid ninety minutes longer than I had to be. Wow, I I, I am I I did so much grinding because I would save, everything <laughs> would respawn, I would fight them again and again, and I I was just lost. But I don't I don't blame the game. I don't think that it was a lack of direction. For some reason, it was just a lack of observation on my part. Sure. Well, and, and yeah, sure. please. Uh, it, so r real quick, just just so everyone is aware, I said this earlier. Stone's going to be somewhat leading this conversation. I've asked him to, just because I I don't even know the like terminology, the vernacular 
sure when speaking about games like this so i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of let him kind of lead it and i'll uh chime in as i can sure well actually let's have you chime in now really quickly what did you think of it i adore this silly little game oh great and and the reason i say silly little game and that i almost say that i adore it with almost a, a sense of of anger is because and i told stone this when you first start playing you are you're in a carnival and in this carnival you and and i don't know what the mechanic is maybe you can explain it to me and you're you're waiting for an event to happen Sure. You can't just proceed right away. Um, I don't know what the trigger is, but what I found was the there was this tent where you could go and you could spend these points that you earn to also play these mini games. And in these mini games, you can win uh, cosmetic items or decorative items for your home. And when I found this out, I decided I need to win all three of these items. And it's, uh, I think it was 10, 20, and 80 points 10, or maybe 40. it's 10, 40 yeah okay and to to earn these points there's a few different things you can do you can do the carnival game where you swing your hammer and you hit the bell and that's just a timing thing uh you can also guess the winner of a race and it's constantly going on constantly going on with it yeah yeah there's just there's these four racers they go around it, it's certainly randomized who wins, but there is a gentleman off to the side that if you talk to him, he tells you who he thinks is going to win. And yeah. I had to look this up. I guess he's right roughly like 60 or 70% of the time. Yeah, he's got good instincts. Yeah, so it's not perfect. but And if you do that, you win 15 20. or 20. 20? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but then there's also there's there's this, an enemy that you can fight, this robot you can fight, and you get, I think, 15 points for beating him. Robo Gato. Robo Gato, that's right. Yeah. And I probably spent the better part of almost two hours yeah. hunting down these points and playing these games so I could finally... You get 15 points, but you get experience that transfers. Oh. Like, it's not just yeah. locked to this carnival. Yeah. The Millennium Fair. There is also a drinking game. Did you do that? It's just button mashing. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. I forgot yeah. about the drinking game. Um, but, and, and I told Stone this while, while it was happening. It's like, Stone, I can't continue until I get all these <laughs> items. And Stone said something along the lines of, yeah, isn't it amazing when a game is just fun to be in the world? Yeah, the world feels lived in. You get there and it immediately feels like there are people here. Yeah. And they're on yeah. their own time. The race is happening without you. That guy's drinking whether or not you're accepting yeah, a right? challenge. <laughs> the robot's yeah. always out there, you know? You're absolutely right. I don't know if I could have put that into words. It does. It just feels like it is a day in the life of this village. It's a special and, day, but yeah, it's like yeah. it's a thing. So there's an event happening and you are part of an event with like people that are excited to be at an event. Yeah, but guess what? You didn't need to be a part of this event. It was going to happen regardless. Right. And you're just you're just along for the ride. And when I when I realized that that I actually genuinely wanted to be in this world and actually, you know, mingle with the other folk, that doesn't happen often. Sure. I will also say that um this is a constant thread throughout this game, but you spending time doing these activities was not wasted. A lot of this game ties into each other and references its past and future activities. And everything you got in the tent, I will give you a hint, was not all cosmetic. But that is oh. all I will say. Oh, okay. So it, it will actually pay off down the road. It could if you know what okay. to do. Yeah. I won't. The, the the nice thing is that you know this is a game about traveling through time you go through different periods in time and you can always come back to the present and this fair will always be going on because it Real, will always okay. be this day when you return gotcha. back to the present so this fair is always available thus the rewards and the activities are constantly available hmm. so it prevents you from missing something that may be there you know, and the, you you mentioned that things will come back, you know, again, again, it's a common theme. And one thing that I was going to absolutely sing its praises for is the trial. This is 
the moment. So when I said let's play Chrono Trigger, in my brain it was like, if I can just get him there, I can hook him. If I can just get him to the trial, maybe I can hook him. You know, because you're not an RPG guy, and it's especially difficult to throw someone into a JRPG. Yeah. So when I had chosen Chrono Trigger, the choice was tactical. I wasn't going to just make you play a game that you would hate. Um, I specifically was looking at a more action-oriented RPG. And what is interesting about Chrono Trigger and why I think it stands the test of time, quote-unquote, is because it is an action RPG, but it's still an action RPG at the uh, inception, not inception, but upcoming of turn-based RPGs, where very little deviated from the fact that if you were an RPG, it had to be turn-based, especially a JRPG. So Chrono Trigger really focuses on, um, it takes the active time battle from Final Fantasy, and all the active time battle is, you'll see it in all their marketing at this time. Every Final Fantasy or Final Fantasy adjacent game at this time would tout the active time battle system, and that's just a bar that fills up at the bottom, and that is when your character moves. It's influenced by their stats, and the enemies have it as well. So it's not hey, it's your turn, now it's my turn, it's your turn, it's my turn. It's the active time battle, quote-unquote. It's the big marketing push, but they use it um, to great effect because Chrono Trigger has an emphasis on positioning, your position, the enemy's position, and then using that to find and exploit the enemy weaknesses, and also combining your strength with your teammate's strength in combo moves, and ways that constantly make it interesting. You're cycling through teammates, finding new moves. You're approaching different types of enemies that have different weaknesses to different types of magic or physical attacks. So finding the best combination of every kind of encounter is its own puzzle. But it happens quickly and it still maximizes the active time battle turn-based system in a way that almost makes you forget for a little bit that you're playing a turn-based RPG. It is very, it's very fast. Yeah. It's a very fast paced turn based. Right. So when I was thinking of an RPG to make you try RPGs, that's why Chrono Trigger came to mind. That and what you're saying, the trial, because all of your actions have consequences. This is a game about time and time travel. And what is time travel without the butterfly effect? Sure. Sure. So you want to talk about what the trial is? Yeah, so the whole the whole idea of this trial is you are on trial for the and, and <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks so if I sure. if I flub any details damn it but you're you're on trial for the disappearance of the princess. You are a uh, really quick caveat had yep. you not a normal player if they don't spend a ton of time at the fair they just like try the events once and then move on. This is probably about an hour into the game. This is the hook. Like, this is, if anybody's going to try it, I say give it an hour, you know, okay. until here. Okay. But yeah. Meanwhile, I'm 11 hours in. Sure. And just getting to the trial. <laughs> you idle. But okay. But, so you're, you're on trial, and obviously, as the player, you know that you're not responsible for this, but that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. There's no way for you to simply prove that you're not this kind of guy. So instead, all these character witnesses start showing up sure. to either speak for or against you. And these people are the the fair uh, participants and your actions around them or directly to them will influence what they have to say. For example, there's one guy who he's just sitting there and there's food sitting next to him. And you can eat it. And when you eat it, it restores your HP and your MP. So, And it's right near Robogato. So you might leave the Robogato, come back and replenish by eating this food, and then go back up to fight. Well, it turns it out that's respawns. his... Yeah. It's his lunch. Yeah. If you talk to him before you go to the fight, he will tell you how excited he is to eat the lunch that his wife had packed for him. Yeah. So you, as a player, think... Oh, that's an indication that that food is there for me. Yep. But you as a person would know, don't steal another person's food. (laughs) (laughs) So you're at odds. You think like, oh, this game wants me to play the game. It's hinting where I should go if my health gets low. But but it's like, hey, you're a bad person for doing that. So yes, if you steal his food to heal yourself, he will testify against you in the court proceeding. (laughs) 
you're a bad person because you stole his food. And just like Stone said, if this was a, an actual encounter and I saw someone sitting next to a plate of food and he's talking about, oh, I, my wife made me this. I'm so excited to eat it. I'm not going to eat his food. <laughs> right. But in the world of video games, hey, I'm low on health. I'm low on, on MP. This replenishes it. There's nothing telling me explicitly don't. I'm going to eat it. Sure. But then it comes back against you. And I I don't think I've ever really seen anything like that, even in modern gaming. Yeah, it is something that you don't see often. I really appreciate this game for doing stuff like that. What I will say is I went back uh, because so when I played this, I was initially playing it. I bought the Steam version and I was playing it on remote play so I could hang out downstairs with my wife while I played it. And I was playing it on the TV and there were some errors where when the FMVs go to play, it's just black mm. if you play remotely with Steam. So I had to come back up to my computer and play it. And I just restarted fresh and started a new game. And I will say that doing the trial perfectly, which is what I did when I restarted, yeah, is so much less fun than messing oh, it really? up. Because you see less events and there's like less suspense throughout it. So the events that influence it, on, tell me how many of these you've seen. Okay. Um, you initially walk into the fair. You proceed to the second area where you'll meet your uh, first teammate that you recruit, whose name is Marl, if you keep the default name. You bump into her, and yes. she drops a pendant. Yes. The game calls attention to the pendant that she drops. <laughs> so your instinct is to walk toward and pick up the pendant. And did you Guilty. do that? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> yeah. So I also did that when I initially did it because I, I haven't played this game since I was a kid, you know? And uh, I completely forgot about that. I also picked up the pendant immediately. And when you are on trial, the uh, chancellor who is testifying against you will call a witness that sees you pick up the pendant first and think that you were only after the princess to begin with, who is Marl, um, because you were after her wealth. So if you immediately went to pick up the pendant instead of checking on her first, then they will assume that you are a thief trying to steal her pendant. Which is yet another real world example. Like if you run into someone and they drop something, human nature says, check on the person, help them up uh, sure. before you go and pick up their jewelry. Right, exactly. Um, the next thing uh, off to the right of that area is a little girl whose cat yes. is missing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you proceed next to the man we were just referencing who is excited to eat his lunch, uh, there is a missing cat next to him. If you talk to the cat, you can lead it back. It will follow you to the girl who lost it, um, and you return it safely, and she will testify to your good character on the trial. Uh, I did there, that. There is the man who says he's excited for his lunch. If you steal his lunch, he will <laughs> testify against you. I did that. Say, that guy stole my <laughs> lunch. Um and there is one that is sometimes missed um, here. Well, sorry, there's two more. There's one that's sometimes missed. If you have Marl in your party and uh, you give her her pendant back, if you walk back to the previous area where the races are being held, there's a blacksmith. Did you do this? Yep. <laughs> you did? Yep. So I this tried to one... get her to sell the pendant. <laughs> <laughs> this one is easy to mess up because it's the first option. And if you're just mashing A to get through the dialogue because it's a shop, then he will ask you at the end of the dialogue, would you convince that girl to sell me her pendant? <laughs> if you choose the first option, which is A, um, then he will. Then that counts against you at the trial. That, again, <laughs> leads to your, uh, your guilt on behalf of your greed. Uh then the final thing, and I'm trying to... Oh, I remember. At the very end of the section where you are free to roam around the fair, you are looking for your friend who has created a machine for you. You are heading north to the third section to check out her machine, and Marl is looking for some candy she wants to buy. She will stop and look at the stall and look around the different types of candy, if you rush her by talking to her, then it will say that you are impatient and the stallkeeper will testify against you <laughs> and say that you are like impatient and, and pressuring her. But if you wait for her to choose and wait for her to come to you and say that she's ready to go, then there will be nobody to testify. So I hit all triggers uh -huh. 
on it without ever having played it, I hit all triggers with the only one working for me is I did rescue the cat. Sure, that's the freebie. <laughs> and I would assume that you were definitely found guilty. Yeah, so now I gotta know. Can you be found innocent? You cannot be found innocent. You can be well well, you can be found not guilty, yes, but it will always be superseded by the Chancellor, who gotcha. then alters the orders given to the knights and says that you are up for execution. So you, the jury will find you not guilty. Okay. But you will still receive the same sentence because he alters the paperwork. Man, how about the fact that we're being sentenced to death and one one of the character witnesses like, the dude ate my lunch. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He needs to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that one, in your case, plays to the three people that testified to your greed. <laughs> but it, it's so fun. It, it really is. It makes you feel like the actions that you take have consequences. And that kind of instills in your mind for the rest of the time, like, be careful. You're kind of on edge. You are, like, trying to act as appropriately as possible in all future yeah. interactions, which is, well, I think it's so fun. Well, and like you said, being a game that is centered heavily around the idea of time travel and everything we know with very few exceptions, and I use air quotes around no, about time travel is the butterfly effect. Just like you said, you go back in the past, you change one little thing, and who knows what far-reaching consequences that's going to have later on. And they, they show you that in the fair within, like you said, the first 60 minutes of the game. Yeah. It's actually brilliant storytelling. Yeah, it, it's so fun. And that's one of my praises for this game it is always just everything is in service of the main plot, but the main plot doesn't drive the world. Your actions drive the world, which makes it so much more interesting, it feels. Because you'll go in the past and you'll do some side quest or something. You know, I don't know how f you just got to the trial and that was it. Uh, in the game? Yeah. Oh no 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 no! I got um I got to the, uh, I guess what I'll call the third age, like the I think it was like future dystopia. Sure. Um, but the last area I was in it was the sewers where you fight a boss by the name of Crawley. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. Did you interact with the mayor um in the present day, who is like really greedy? I don't think i did it's fine Be it's he's on the continent to the south it's not at the starting area because i've never so i i started in the present i get sent back in time after going to the machine mm -hmm. and then eventually i get through another portal and that sends us far into the future in this dystopian um time sure. i've never i've never been back to the present okay yeah back in the present there is an area to the south, like on the southern continent. And there's if you go into the mayor's house there, all his kids are like, I hate this guy. He's so greedy. He's the worst. <laughs> and his wife is like, my husband's so greedy. You know, it, it just people don't like this guy. And he tries to charge you to even speak to him. Uh, and if you go back into the past when he is a child, or um, it, maybe it's his grandparent. I don't exactly remember. Um but they will ask for his mother is cooking and she'll ask if you have any like spice beef jerky for dinner. If you give his mother the spice beef jerky, she will teach her children the importance of selflessness and use you as an example of it. And then he will grow up to be a selfless person. So wow. much so that his wife says that he's now too selfless. <laughs> like when you go back to the Monday and all his kids love him so much. And, uh, and one of my favorite lines, if you talk to his kid upstairs after, she will say that um, my dad is so, everyone says that my dad is so magnanimous. I think he's just big boned, which I think is really good for him. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's little stuff like that. Like your actions drive the world, which is just little side stuff that you pick up on that you go back into the past or even in the far future to see consequences of what's happening right now. It's so interesting to see the world evolve around your actions. And you're always in it. Kind of my beef with RPGs a lot of times is that like you're a guy passing through town. You know, 
you get these requests from these townspeople just because you're the guy with the sword that walked up to them. But why don't you ask the guards or some other person in your community to do this? But in Chrono Trigger, it really feels like nobody's asking you to do something. You're just in Mm. a very unique position to solve everyone's problems. And I think it motivates you slightly more to go out of your way to say like, oh, this is something I can fix. And if I fix this, it's going to be better in 400 years. It's going to be better in a thousand years. And you can go and see that actual impact. And it's, it just, it strives you forward in such an interesting way because it's like, this is a unique problem that only I am equipped to solve. Wow. Yeah. I want to play it. I, I, <laughs> and I know that that's a silly thing because we've had two weeks to play. So we, we actually took a week off last week because I didn't get much time to play. And frankly, I didn't get much time this week to play either. Um, but I think one of the best things I can say about the game is being a game that's not really in my area of expertise in the games that I normally sit down. Like I really and truly have every intention of carving out some time to play this game. Mm-hmm. And there's something there's something massive to say about that. Uh, a lot of the characters that you meet are, I hate to put it this way, but they're just they're inconsequential overall to the story, at least from what I've seen. There's a lot of NPCs with just flavor text, but they're all it's all relevant text. It does speak to the world and its current state and their place in in this society. And I didn't skip anyone. And I, I, I talk to every single person. Yeah, what's great about this game is that it is very focused on constantly pointing you to the next objective, which is something that's needed in RPGs, but it's hard to find the good balance of like fluff and important dialogue. Mm. But it's really good at pointing you to the next objective, not because it's like, this is what a town NPC is supposed to say to get you moving forward. It's like, this is an event that is impacting their lives. So of course they're going to talk about it, but it's also reminding you like, Hey, this is the next problem for you to solve. Yeah. And that's also what's great because it not only does that with the main plot, but each character's side story is just seamlessly woven into the plot in that way as well. Like this is, less so affecting everyone but something that's like hanging over the head of one of your teammates and you probably haven't gotten far enough for this to really affect you but when you like witness their side stories it's like obviously this is something that is like very important to them and of course they are const it's constantly at the forefront of their minds so it just it feels so effortless like when it finally ties your individual character stories with the main plot and it does really really uniquely do away with boring fetch quests and disinteresting side quests. Hmm. So I'm curious, Mm -hmm. and this is, this is maybe going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things that we, we want to talk about on this podcast is, you know, what, what impact did this game have? Why was this important to either the gaming industry at large or to you? So I'm curious, can you see, or, or talk about any of its influence that it's had. Obviously, Sea of Stars, we've already mentioned. Sure. Um, anything else that come to mind or in your research you found you know, notable ties to other future installments, other games? Well, that is a direct line. Like, Chrono Trigger to Sea of Stars is just, you draw a straight line. Okay. But I think Chrono Trigger specifically kind of moves the genre at, in a very young time in the genre's life away from being strictly turn-based and opening the door to more action. So I think Chrono Trigger, along with, if you like this, the Mana series, like Secrets of Mana, is another really good action RPG that uh, Square also made. Um, But things like this, obviously, to me, open the door for even much further down the line, like a Dark Souls. Like action RPGs, this is, I would say, their grandfather. Like it's it's this period until 3d came along like this was the the door opening for action rpgs bring it to hmm. and and not to say it's the first yeah but it's the one that exposed the most people to the idea it's fast paced it's interesting it's like i said earlier all about finding exploiting the weaknesses finding the right party composition managing your equipment in a way that's interesting resource management I think that all paved the way to 
like I don't think a lot of modern action RPGs exist without this or even just action games period hmm. and one another great thing I'll say about uh, this game of the time is that there are no random encounters which is also so important you see I was surprised by that almost everything on the map yeah there are some of course there are some ambushes Yes. But yeah, you always know what you're in for. And you can skip around. <laughs> you can run around and, you know, try not to get caught in these in these encounters if you're not ready yeah. for it. And and I did I had a few times just early on where it wasn't that I wasn't ready for the fight, but I just I didn't want to. Like mm-hmm. I don't I don't need this encounter and I found that I could I could skirt around often. Um obviously not if you're in a tight area like the sewers where it's like two tiles wide, you're not right. getting around them there. Um, but I was really surprised in the overworld, we're just traversing, going from town to town or new settlement. There, There's no encounters. Um, that was kind of nice. I was it, expecting it ev- for every time I played. Yeah. And I never got of, used to it not being there. Actually, the overworld and the sewers, two things. One uh, other thing I'd, I'd love to praise about it is a compact world design. Because you were traveling through so many different time periods, having a much more... I'd say intimate overworld where it's like you're familiar with the locations every time you visit the different times makes it easier to see how they flow into each other in a way that's very interesting without being too tedious. So a compact world design is definitely another huge plus, but I actually think the the sewers that you were in is a great example of like environmental storytelling because almost uniquely in the sewers there is kind of a mechanic that it tells you that isn't like a mechanic per se but really just judges your interactions but the monsters in the water of those abandoned sewers are drawn to sound did you see this there's like different objects you can interact with (gasps) oh okay all right so i was full disclosure i was playing chrono trigger up until the time uh, we started this call. Sure. And I was in the sewer. And, and when you first get in, there's one little frog that talks about, uh, you know, sound and how they're drawn to the sound. It never... Oh, my gosh. Because, all right, <laughs> I thought it was a mimic. at the, Towards the end of this one uh, sewer section, there's a save spot. Yeah. And I thought when I was interacting with the save spot, that's why the monster was coming like it was a trap. No, no. It's because the save tile makes a chime sound. Yes. <gasps> There's an abandoned cat and it yep. meows when you go up to yep. it. I think There's there like a, a box that you touch. Yeah. And, oh, my word. And you only get ambushed if you interact with those. I had no idea. Even though the game straight up told me what would happen. Yeah. But even so, just at progressing through the sewer, it's it's interesting to see, you know, it's it the story is told through the environments. Yes, I think that's wow. a constant. It's yeah. Um, another curious question, and we I know we're we're already approaching the hour mark, so we, mm. we won't go too too long winded. But um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the idea? And this, I think it's a time period thing, but this game. With as much going on as it as the game does, the mechanics, the combos, the tech, the the HP, MP, T, TP was that the other one? Tech points? Yeah. Uh, zero tutorial whatsoever. There, there is a little bit in the beginning when it's kind of introducing the the combat system, but yeah, there is very little tutorial. But that is a, a consequence of this time in gaming. Do you, Do you think it was a detriment? No, I don't. I think this game excels by trial and error. It, I think the save points are frequent enough that it's not really an issue if you fail. But what I will say is if you're playing the PC version, luckily there is an autosave, so it eliminates that frustration. If you are failing, it'll just take you back to the same area you entered in. Um, so no, I don't think it's a detriment to it. In fact, I think it's a little bit more fun because I get the impression when you're playing that Chrono is good, but he's not great. And hmm. you have to make him great. So I think part of getting enveloped in that world is kind of not being good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. As a player. It it's it fits the narrative. Sure. That could be me placeboing pretty hard. Sure. But 
but I sure you're you're I filling feel. in the blanks that they left. Sure, and I, I think, don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, maybe it's a symptom of the time, but also what you have to consider is um, a lot of these games were played alongside an instruction manual. Right. Yes. So Ooh, that would be interesting yeah. going forward if we do choose some of these older games. See if we can like actually locate a digital copy to see what they had. Sure. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And what do you what do you think? So you're in the future now, which I think really emphasizes this. But do you have any feelings on the the graphics or the environment? It it's really I think when you're in. A, when you're in one of the the tile pieces, when you're in the sewer or the castle or the or the um, the prison, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I didn't really care for the aesthetics of the overworld. Okay. Um, and and I don't know, it's because the overworld is painted almost with like these broad artistic, uh, like watercolor brush strokes. It's almost like it's very pleasing looking the environment but then you are these like pixelated characters and it's very juxtaposed to each other and and that's a thing not great yeah yeah so that that threw me out but once you're in an environment it was it was gorgeous gorgeous pixel work i think that is the the personality of this game is almost entirely defined environmentally it's almost entirely defined by akira akira toriyama's incredibly unique art style the the way that the different infrastructure is const- infrastructure is constructed is so wholly unique and interesting and it's it's crazy because if you ever like see any of his work any of his like manga or like dragon ball z dragon ball it's a lot of rounded shapes machines things like that i mean robo is like the perfect example with his like dome head and his like big round body but it's so difficult to do that on an SNES where you only have pixels and jagged right. edges. And I think it's still, it still came out in a way that I think looks really crisp. No, it was, it was, it was really nice looking. Uh, it was just the overworld that was kind of throwing me. Sure. I get and, it. and that, that disparity between the, the pixel art characters and the artistic representation of the, of the environment itself. Um, but going back real quick to the, the tutorial, I'm with you. I don't think it hurt the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I actually think that the game is incredibly forgiving, not just with its frequency of save points, with its auto saving of uh, uh, when you're on the PC port, but also just the the consumables like potions, oh, which yeah. you can use in and out of battle are 10 gil. And you're getting 300 gil per battle typically. Yeah, they hand those out like candy at the beginning yep. to make yes. sure that you are good to go. But if you go toward, like, the, there's a particular dungeon that is optional at the end. But if you go for that, you are going to want to stock up. Because okay. it doesn't matter how frequently they hand them out before, you're going to need them at the end, and you're going to need the best. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Good but, to know. yes, I think that is intentional. It, it almost seems hand-holdy at the beginning. But it's nice because I think the game wants you to experiment with different party compositions. Yes. And not everyone is a healer, you know. Right, right. Uh, it was it was cool to see what the different combinations did. I thought that was really really awesome, especially just doing like the uh, what was it Cyclone Aura or Aura Heal? Yeah, that was really really cool. I loved seeing them work together. Even though it doesn't really, it it tells you a brief description of what it's going to do, but then you actually try and you see it in action. But then, and this, I can't believe this hasn't come up yet in our talk. One of the best things they have, and I don't know if this is in the original or PC or what. You'll have to tell me. Mm-hmm. Auto battle. I believe this is a PC thing. Okay. I at least don't remember when I played it on the SNES. Auto but- battle, and it's very rudimentary. Mm-hmm. As far as I can tell, all it does is you put it on auto battle. Your characters will just use a simple attack. They won't use items. They won't use combos. And... I think they just target the enemy nearest them. They target the, the first in the order. The first in the order. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. what's nice about it is what I would do is I would go into an area. When I would come across a new enemy type, I would fight them with auto battle off. So I could, you know, see if there's any strategy to it, if they're weaker to certain things. But then once I've encountered them, I just would run into a fight, auto battle on, and just let it do its thing. So good. Yeah. And also, 
it's a fast forward button. If you're getting yes. tired of seeing the same spell cast it over and over again, which I don't because <laughs> the uh, the sprite work is absolutely beautiful on a lot of these. But it's it's a good way to be like, okay, this one's taking a while. Hit for me, it was Y super quick, yep. and then untap it, and okay, we sped through that. But yeah, auto battle is great. Um, I think your experience, you probably felt like it was a little easier because you grinded for forever <laughs> on <laughs> Robogato. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, uh, auto battle, I think, is a super good feature. It it helped me grind a little bit without without focusing on the grind. And this game is really good. It doesn't really require you to grind a lot. A lot of bosses are matched to your level. So yes. it scales with you. So if you grind, you're kind of only making the game more difficult. But there are some sections where it will just be out of your level. Yeah. There was I was doing a little bit of reading uh earlier and I was I read a, a Reddit thread and it was why why do people love Chrono Trigger so much? And this person was kind of sharing how it, it wasn't really grabbing them. And I read this really thoughtful response and, and one of them was talking about that, the whole idea of this game, unlike traditional RPGs, and especially, you know, Final Fantasies of the last decade or so, this game does not require grinding. Mm -hmm. It will always be quote unquote the right level for you. And I remember playing Final Fantasy X. I got nearly to the end of the game. I was in college at the time. And so finding free time to play this game was, was very difficult. And I got to this part near the end of the game where I just, my party was not physically strong enough to continue. Yeah. And I knew if I wanted to see the end of the game, I had to backtrack and grind and grind to level up. And I've, I've never seen the end of the game except on YouTube because of that experience. Yeah, that's such a bummer. And this game, of course, I didn't beat it, but from what this person's telling me, from what you're telling me, and from what I've seen, that is not a thing you you run into in I, Chrono Trigger. Well, so you said something which I believe could just be the tagline for this game, <laughs> but it was not like a traditional RPG. Yeah. And this is at a time where they were making these were this is the traditional RPG factory square, <laughs> you know. They printed out a new one, and it's like, okay, this is the gold standard now. And they got it out the door. And uh, I think, yeah, everything they did, all the decisions they ended up making gameplay-wise in this are are top-notch, and I think they hold true even to today. And it, it, it makes an action RPG that's also a puzzle, and it's a fun puzzle to solve yes. and unlock. Bosses are interesting. They're not just repetitive bullet sponges. It's interesting. It, I mean, the whole game is interesting. It has intrigue, and it wants... it keeps pushing you forward and you want to keep going forward yeah i think what i'll have to do is as i keep playing we might have to have like a segment over the next several forgot to say sure. where it's like hey where's blue ad and chrono trigger i'd love that yeah i i grinded up and made sure i got what i think is the best ending but i don't know I, okay. I haven't looked it up to see i believe i read that there were 13 different endings. jeez okay yeah okay and i uh, know sorry <laughs> uh I believe I got two endings. I There is a particular point you will come to which acts as a hub world. And at one point in the hub world, there's an object you can interact with that will automatically take you to the final boss. Ooh. I did not know that when I interacted oh. with this object. And I went to the <laughs> final boss and obviously I lost. Yes. So I think I technically also got the bad ending. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I did not save that. <laughs> so I got... Uh, probably the bad ending and what i hope is the best ending all right ah. i always love that i love when you're, <laughs> you're able to attempt the final the final challenge and i mean this game had new game plus yeah which is crazy yeah. how ahead of the time it is but okay there was supposed to be when we were um going to record this we knew upcoming on December 25th, there was going to be an interview with the three three of the creators of Chrono Trigger on a Japanese radio station. Shoot, and I have right. been dying for that to be translated, and it hasn't been. Oh, okay. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I was like so looking forward to hearing like the juicy tidbits behind the scenes, and I got nothing. The best I can find is this uh, Twitter account. Uh, called Ganky underscore JPN, which translated little tidbits from it. 
there isn't much they said that's super exciting besides uh they sorry this is uh yuji hori uh hironobi sakaguchi and kazuhika torishima sorry if i got any of those names wrong these mm-hmm. are big players in square like square enix these are like heavy hitters today yeah. like the head of final fantasy and dragon quest but uh they one thing i've been seeing circulating online is they really praise sea of stars they said it's a really good chrono trigger like game and it's done it's executed very well um but another thing is uh i read briefly they translated in this tweet is uh in the end the three of them said they would um they could see themselves doing Chrono Trigger 2, but if they ever made something again, they would probably just end up making something new. So they have like a favorable outcome of how Chrono Trigger was received, but for the most part, they're like, Chrono Trigger is finished, you know? But if they were to ever come together and even utter the words Chrono Trigger 2, but then came up with something different, I'm pretty sure they'd hit on a lot of these notes yeah and they said they would want to do it as a smaller budget game but they know it would probably end up just getting bigger and bigger right which is right kind of the story of chrono trigger i did a little bit of research on this because i was looking forward to that interview and that interview never happened <laughs> <laughs> so i found uh, another little tidbit of information that was compiled uh by this is somebody that published an article on it's called medium.com uh aiden mauer and they wrote this article called timeless a history of chrono trigger now the article requires you to sign in so i didn't read it but they made a reset era post summarizing the article they themselves the actual author um and there are two quotes i want to share from the article quick if you'll allow me yes please um this is something interesting uh, that I did not know until uh, I read this article, but it says, quote, Chrono Trigger was one of Super Nintendo's largest games, jumping from the 24 megabyte cart to an enormous 32 megabyte cart midway through development. It was hmm. Square's first of that size, and Takeshi Takeda, director and scenario writer of Chrono Trigger, joked in an interview that they could have fit four copies of Final Fantasy IV on a single Chrono Trigger cart. And there's another quote here that said, we had done our best to fit all of the graphics into 24 megs, but it turned out to be too much. We couldn't fit all the scenarios we wanted either, but thanks to those extra eight megs, Magus's castle looks so fantastic. Those set pieces couldn't be done by just reusing sprites and tiles from other dungeons. While we always try to reuse things we can, like the moon, at the planning stages of development, when your mindset is much more conservative with regards to memory, you can't really create elaborate set pieces and scenes. So that eight megabytes came at just the right time. And I think absolutely that shows. Like the different time periods all look so unique from each other. Even the ones that are so close together, like the 600 AD and the present day, which is a 1000 AD. I think even though like architecturally they're so similar that I think mm-hmm. they still look visually distinct from each other. So, and so then, I'm go ahead. Uh, nope. Sorry. I'm, Cause I'm going to jump into something else. So you finish it. <laughs> oh, uh, th- this is also like, sorry. All of this is tying back to the fact that like, if they made Chrono Trigger two, it would kind of spin and get bigger and bigger Yeah. because like, okay. So the cartridges got literally bigger. <laughs> like that was right. a, a huge change, um, in the way that, that they, technology was handled but also as far as the team the article says i'm sorry the summary of the article by the same author (laughs) says uh square projects at the time generally capped out about 25 people on the development team chrono trigger had 50 to 60 (laughs) and then it pulled over a bunch of developers from an in-progress final fantasy 7 for the snes to finish it on time and this balloon the development size to about 200, which was enormous for the time. Eight times what they typically have. And that is like a team you're seeing now on games with the advanced technology compared to the SNES to make a SNES title. That's huge. Wow. Yeah. Uh, So what I was going to ask about, just talking about sequel, because I'm looking looking at uh, some things here. 
what's the deal with Chrono Cross? So not a Cro- sequel. Yeah, Chrono Cross is not a sequel. Chrono Cross, uh, it, it came out on PlayStation. It played with kind of the idea of having an expansive number of party members so i believe there's a very large number of recruitable party members okay and i think it plays around with a little bit of the action rpg mechanics but it is generally not seen favorably as a sequel to or even a spiritual successor to chrono trigger it's kind of treated as a separate entity okay and according to the just this wiki article it says it takes place in the same world as chrono trigger Mm. Uh, but that's apparently its only connection Okay. Yeah, it's 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 got a cult following. It's not received very highly by a general audience, but the people that okay. love it love it, you know? Okay. Hmm. But also, I mean, you could put anything in the world of Chrono Trigger. You're exploring like six different time periods. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's, it's not the world of Chrono Trigger, it's the entire universe of it. Turns out Joe and Mac for the this- for the SNES <laughs> is in the same world as Chrono that Trigger. That could easily fall in. There is a time you go to 65,000 <laughs> BC. And uh, yeah, one of my favorite teammates is there. But yeah, that could actually be <laughs> Joe and Mac. <laughs> but I think if there were any kind of sequel or new property to appear in the, the Chrono Trigger anthology, I would just love a show. Just oh, okay. Every, I feel like every the way the story continues to build off each other and constantly being referential but like each time period has a self-contained story i think that would be so interesting as like a i don't know like an hbo show have we ever gotten i'm trying to think i know final fantasy has a few movies has there ever been a show based on any of these types of games yeah absolutely Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Persona has, has a famous number of enemies, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> like I said, not my forte. <laughs> yes, it's very easy to go from an anime art style to an anime show. That makes sense. I don't I don't even know this type of, sh- of series, but uh, I think Devil May Cry had a really famous show in like 2008, like anime. Oh, and wow. they're actually remaking one now, 2023. So, well, yeah, I'm gonna run my questions by you before we hit record <laughs> next time. No, it's okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> people have those questions. You might be speaking for them. Like I said, I don't think your audience has a lot of exposure to Chrono Trigger um, or JRPGs, but I think this was a really fun first step, and I can promise that there will be no JRPGs suggested by me in the immediate future. In the immediate future, just let me let me put this one to bed over the next few weeks, and then we can talk. I will warn you that the only JRPG I am considering in the future would be the remake of Persona Three if it's good. Okay, <laughs> but I All would right. not. Yeah, I would not be like okay. So it's only a hundred hour game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will tell you a uh, little peek into the future here. The next, I have four games lined up for next uh, round that I'm okay uh, giving to you, and all of them are action games. So oh, nice. Okay. So we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit, and I think I think they're four really good ones. Yeah. But I'm That's... happy you've enjoyed your time with I Chrono have. Trigger. Um, I very I, much have. I absolutely loved it. I never finished it when I was younger. Um, I, the way I first experienced Chrono Trigger was I just learned about emulators. And I put an SNES emulator on my computer, which was pretty much the heaviest that my computer at the time could handle. What was that company that shipped them in, like, uh, like cow-colored boxes? Oh. Uh, Compaq? It... No. Yes. Was it? Wait, no, Dell. Was it old Dell? No, I think this company doesn't exist anymore. Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm Googling it quick. Right? Computer company cow box. Oh, Gateway. Gateway. <laughs> yeah. gateway. <laughs> yes. We had an old Gateway computer, uh, and I learned how to get emulators working on it. And uh, one of the first games I emulated was Chrono Trigger, and I was blown away by it. I thought it was so cool that you could travel through time. I re- the last thing I really, really remember is the future, pretty much where you are. Um, but I was like maybe nine at the time. So I remember really liking it. I remember 
when I got older, kind of seeing the beginning of the game again, like trying to play it again and seeing like the trial at the beginning and be like, Oh, I have to get back into this and just never following through on it. And then now we played it for this and I burned through, I think it took me 23 hours for my playthrough. Wow. And I was just constantly like, okay, I'm going to go and play Chrono Trigger. I'm just going to go play Chrono Trigger for a bit. I just couldn't step away from it. (sighs) Ah, I will. I will finish this game. Mark my words. <laughs> and again, that's about the highest praise I can offer. Yeah. The, I, and the nice thing about it is the game kind of moves at your pace. Like you can finish the game whenever you're ready to go forward with it. Okay. Wow. Cause there's so many different endings. It's like, just do the one that satisfies you. Now I that's... couldn't be satisfied until I did every character side quest. <laughs> I had to get right. all the bros together, you know? <laughs> and I got the ending that was like, I don't know. I I won't. So there's, there's so many different endings. I'll say a little bit about it. It's not much of a spoiler, but uh, you know, I I love playing these stories, like about a team, and I hate when they get broken up at the end. <laughs> but mm. it's like with Chrono Trigger, it's destined to happen. They're all from different time periods. So it's like, man, I don't want to break up the band. But then <laughs> I <laughs> I watch the end of it, and I was just so happy because it's like. I got the one where everyone had like a really good ending. Like I felt yeah. good for my friends almost. It was, it's like a little cheesy, but like, I was like, I, f- I finished the game and I felt really proud. That's good though. I like that. That's a good way to tie it all together. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, I think, do you have anything else you want to add about Chrono Trigger? No, but I got to ask, right. do you have your list picked out for next episode? Nope. <laughs> nope but i will that's dangerous i will dangerous. and it will and it will not be it will not be a repeat no no i i am gonna dig i'm gonna dig into my past and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna bust out some oh man i love playing these i wonder if stones played them oh great yeah we're okay. gonna we're gonna have some fun well maybe keep in mind that i have all action games lined up if that helps okay okay all right <sighs> so thanks for playing yeah, it, it was a blast. It was, and I can't wait to keep playing. So, if just in case you you have missed the previous ones or you missed the format, this now wraps up our first full round, I guess, of games. Month, month, yeah, that works. Time <laughs> adding if time into some talks kind about of Chrono measurement Trigger. of time. What's a word for four weeks? But <laughs> next time we come together, um, I am going to be presenting Stone with my list of upcoming games. He will choose one of those. We will then play. And then the following week, he'll present his list of upcoming games to play. I will pick one. We'll play that. And then in the two weeks to come, uh, we'll go ahead and play and discuss. Those lists can be altered by your suggestions. So yes. feel free to leave them in the comments. Please tell us if you played Chrono Trigger either now or in the past and what you thought of it. I would love to hear it. And I would love to talk to you about this game in the comments. Uh, if you do have any spoilers... Maybe try to hide them as best as possible. I know it's tough in YouTube comments, but you can enter a few line breaks so that people have to hit see more to see your spoilers. Uh, And the links to the article that I mentioned will be in the description. I would obviously like to credit the people that took the time to research all this stuff. So that's my bit. Perfect. All right. Well, until next time, thank you so much for joining us and forgot to save. Keep these suggestions coming, and we'll talk again soon. See ya.